This is Morgan Freeman, and you are listening to one of the most important podcasts ever made in the history of podcasting, The Pocket Party Podcast with my good friend, Darren Carter. Mm. Let's start that party in your ear holes. Everybody listen to Derek Carter. Yeah. We all know he's the party starter. Uh, so if you want to listen to a podcast for free, now listen to a pocket party. Uh, pocket party. They're wrong. <laughs> People used to go cruise. That was a big thing. They used to go cruising in their cars on weekends. <laughs> cruising all th- right, like the fifties and six, and then the seventies, eighties, nine, even the early nineties. Right? It was a good time. You'd be in your car. Co- I was trying to explain to my cousin. He's a millennial. He doesn't get it. You know. He's like, so you guys would drive around in traffic on purpose. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, we didn't take... It wasn't on the freeway. You know? We weren't, like, on the 405. You know? It was, you know, like, main streets all across America, right? You know? And he goes, and, and, it, was, and he goes, and it would work? <laughs> well, not necessarily. I mean, like, you always heard about it. You know, you always heard... Hey, did you hear about uh, James and those, uh, like, pack of girls? Like, they met at the Kmart parking lot. <laughs> Like, you go cruising, you make a couple U-turns, and then you, like, meet up there, and, like, you guys hook up. <laughs> so there was always that legend of, like, let's keep doing this. We'll sit in traffic and look at other dudes at red lights. What the fuck? Where, where are the women at? <laughs> Hey, one time we almost got lucky, me and my buddy, right? We were, I lived in, at the time, I lived in San Jose, California. And uh, I remember it was, uh, he was driving, I was in the passenger seat. And then and there was these two ladies right next to us, right? And the light was red. And, and at the stoplight, he goes, he goes, yo, ask them where the party's at. <laughs> you know when you get nervous, you repeat the question. Ask them where the party is. Ask, <laughs> ask them where the party is. Ask them where the party is. Where the party <laughs> So I remember I was like, <clears throat> I was like, okay, okay, ask. He goes, hurry up for the light turns green. I was like, shit. <laughs> Hi there. Where's the party? <laughs> this is what I felt like it sounded like, but I'm sure it came out. Where's the party? Right? And I forget this woman had great timing. She waited right for the light to turn green, and I go, where's where, where's the party? And she goes. It's in your pants, and you're the only one coming. (laughs) They laugh, my friend laughed, everyone's laughing. (laughs) I didn't get it. I was being too logical. I was like, I don't, it doesn't, what? She can't even see my pants. That was dumb. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> See, some of you guys, you, you, I, feel, I feel like you, know, you have that, that look. Like you would know, you'd ask, "Where's the party?" And they would fall, you know. They would be into it. <laughs> Maybe you ask, "Where's the party?" You were at a stoplight. In your pants. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think he understood the question. Yeah, 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 bring him more shit. We're going to try this again, ladies and gentlemen. You have one line. Thank you. You're supposed to ask, where's the party? Not... Right, right. All right, take two, take two. Go ahead, drink up a little bit. Drink a little bit. So the party... Remember I even did the sound effect of like hitting the brakes, like, 
And he's like, in your pants. Long Island iced tea. Okay, that was. Remember, okay, where's the phone? <laughs> Where's the party? <laughs> See, he's got that. Where's the party? He's asked that before. In your pants. <laughs> All right, let's take you to the friend zone. Let's see how these friends. <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> Are you dating anybody? <laughs> all right, this is, we need to see a real scene. See, these guys are all cocky and shit. They got ladies. <laughs> Where's the party? Yeah. It's in your pit. I want to see a real single guy. <laughs> I asked Louie, that guy, he's a pussy. He already left. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna use the bathroom. <laughs> Where's the party? You sound like a fucking cop, dude. I, mean, not to, I don't mean to curse, but he, just, he looks like, where's the party? Yeah, we got a party. Yeah, it's in, it's in his pants. He's the only one coming, uh-huh. We're back. Guys, we have a great show ahead today. Ah, oh, man, I'm so excited for you guys to hear Candace. And also, my buddy Stevie D joins me. What a day, right, huh? What a day. This podcast, I think we're into like 60 episodes already. How great is that? Do me a favor. Go to iTunes and give Pocket Party Podcast five stars and a review if you can. And also, while you're on the internet, while you're playing on your phone, check out my Instagram, Darren Carter. And... uh and if you're inclined, you know, you want to throw me a few bucks, go to DarrenCarter.com slash donate. And uh, I'll tell you what, for the first five people that donate, I'll do an ad for you on this podcast. I'll promote your business. I'll promote your social media, whatever you'd like. Just let me know in the, uh, the notes when you uh, hit that PayPal button. Anyways, we're going to get into it and uh, <laughs> get your jollies. That's right. We're going to get your jollies. Now let's start that party in your ear hole. How are you? It's me, Arnold, and you're listening to the Pocket Party Podcast with my workout buddy, Darren Carter. Oh, he likes to work out at the gym and pump the muscles. It's fantastic. He's a girly man. Here he is. Listen to it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we're back. Hey, everybody. How are you? I'm here in the beautiful hills. I'm in the nice home of Candice Michelle. Thank you for having me here. Yay, thank you for coming. Hey, and I got my buddy here, Stevie D. I'm a squatter. I just hang out in the pool house and uh, <laughs> come in when they need me. <laughs> I know. Her husband, Kenji, is in the, in, the, in the room here. You might hear him in the background. Say what's just up. keeping an eye on us. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, that's his He's radio like personality. He's like my Stewie. You know, yeah. Chelsea Handler has a Stewie. Yeah, so. yeah. That's funny. <laughs> oh, Chewy, Chewy. Stewie's like Family Guy, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I put a diaper on him. It's like, yeah, candy. <laughs> we'll get to that later. <laughs> I know that was funny because I was like, he's like, yo, yo, yo. Because off the mic, he's like, hello, guys. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> he's like you, Darren. He's, you, yeah, yeah. You've done so much BET. And yeah, exactly. Like, like, I'm Darren, but the ladies. Night, like 500 Latino gang members. Right. Hey, how hey, what's up, fucker? Let me laugh, Holmes. <laughs> I'm like, I'm Darren, but the ladies know me as Deron. And that'd be funny, right? Like, like, like off stage, like as I'm setting up, I'm all nervous and, you know, because I, I peed twice since I've been to Candace's home. <laughs> she's like, are you nervous? I'm like, no, it's just water and coffee. Well, then the first time he saw the Playboy cover and he excused himself. So I don't <laughs> I can't, you know, vouch exactly what he was doing. Because I, I, I drove to Stevie's house, and then Stevie, he, he drove here, 
And as we're coming up the canyon, we were talking, and he goes, "Yeah, man, you know, uh, Playboy, blah blah blah." I'm like, "I know, I watched the TED Talk, and, you know." <laughs> yeah. And uh, trust I, me, I know. I go, "That's gonna be," <laughs> I go, "Because I know I'm gonna have to use the restroom," and I'm like, "It's gonna be weird. Like the first thing I do when I get there is use the restroom," you know. Like, he goes, "Especially if one of our Playboys which are in there." Which John? <laughs> yeah. Hey, which way is that centerfold magazine? <laughs> I used to do that with my grandpa. He would, he would, uh, he subscribed to, to Playboy, and. Uh, and I, I, I honestly, it's, I didn't get it. You don't get it until you get older. I really did read the articles. It was like, you know, when you're a teenager. There's articles? <laughs> <laughs> when you're a teenager, you're like, that's a funny joke. But as you get older, I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. And then my buddy's DJ Crash he used to DJ. You know, you know Crash? Yeah, yeah. He would DJ up at the Playboy Mansion. and But it was always funny because I, I, uh, he lived in, you know, he, I, he lived in Fresno. So I drive from LA to my, to the wife's farm, which is near Visalia, Hanford area. And then when I'd go visit my grandpa, I'd be like a half hour drive. So the first thing I'd have to do is use the restroom. But, but oftentimes I'd, you know, I'm like, well, I'm going to be in there. I might as well grab this Playboy. <laughs> so I, he must have, what's wrong with my grandson? The first thing he does is, you know, <laughs> beelines it right to the restroom and grabs a Playboy. But, uh, Stomach issues there, son. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, grandpa, I'm kind of dry. Do you have any lotion? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> a, little, a little flaky. A little pasty today, grandpa. By the way, you know, uh, I don't know if you know this. I do not get tan like you got a great tan and oh. i uh are you from milwaukee i'm from milwaukee from- but we just went to turks and caicos so oh oh I, that's I got a nice tan yeah because you get the tan i i don't get the tan and my son even though he's half armenian he uh and, and and my wife has beautiful olive skin i i'm very pale and he takes after me so it was funny in school they they wrote to describe yourself you put hair brown eyes hazel and for his skin he put bright white <laughs> Ultra transparent, clear, which is funny. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're we're lucky to uh, we're luck, luck. Thank you for doing the Pocket Party podcast. Yeah. No. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Any, well, anytime. She got it. friends in low no places. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I have a feeling this is how it's going to go. Right. You get yeah. you get this podcast. You know one person who knows somebody else, and bam. You know. But um. So let's let's start. Let's give us a little bio. Uh, for people, it's their first time listening, uh, first time finding out who you know Candice Michelle is. Um, I, now I saw your TED talk and I I was really moved by it. I thought it was amazing. Thank and I, you. I love and listen. I, I um, let's start with wherever you would like to start. Mil, you, you and your father in Milwaukee or? Uh, well, I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Moved to Los Angeles at nineteen. You know, I want to be famous. Yeah. And so I came here and I was waitressing. You know, great way to be famous. A very famous waitress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, can we back up even? <laughs> Let's back up even before okay. Milwaukee, because oh. I, I, when you, when I, when I saw that it was Milwaukee, I have fond memories of Milwaukee. There was oh. a comedy club there. It's called Comedy Cafe. I don't know if it's still around. Uh, they moved locations. I did the second location. It was great. Uh, there was. Uh, did you ever hear of the Comedy Cafe, or was that even in your world? Or no, your realm, you know, I was so young you when moved, I lived right, there, yeah. like that whole world. Like I never just got to experience it there. I just went for for the, you know, I moved here and there was dominatrix oh. shows in the clubs, hanging from the ceiling. It was crazy. Hollywood's <laughs> crazy, right? It's, it's, crazy. it's when you go from Milwaukee to the. I mean, <laughs> Milwaukee was a little. I don't know. I. It's a little rough, though, right? A little bit, like the parts that I well, at least I, the parts there I went to. There are parts that are rough, yeah. Yeah, because I well, and, and and the club I would play, there was a lot of like bikers that worked there, but they were like the <laughs> dressed up bikers. They weren't like your ZZ Top bikers. And I remember one guy had tattoos all over his body of the seven deadly sins. Oh. And after the after one of the shows, he was like With the checklist next to them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I remember like the one I on his murdered anybody. Yeah, <laughs> the one on his palm said greed. You know, and yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah, good. You know, like yeah. pay me or something. You know, but but I remember, um, yeah. Anyway. It was a it was a fun time, but where that club was, there was a uh, they were like you got to go to the the pharmacy to, to get to, to have lunch. It's a great pharmacy. It's at like the a, pharmacy. Yeah, it's weird, right? It's weird. Yeah. But I guess. And did you go? You know what? I think I I went. I did go, but I didn't eat there. I, You're I, like I'll have some Vicodin with a side <laughs> of soma. <laughs> I know. I take the Vicodin shake. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, they put Viagra in there. This is yeah. awkward. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I remember what was weird was I went to this this pharmacy to have lunch or whatever. It's like like out here in California back when I was a kid, it's called like Newberry's Cafe or something, where it's like half diner, half pharmacy. It was honestly, it was once I went there, uh, I I was like I wanted to get the heck out of there because it was in <laughs> sort of a seedy area. And I remember I was like you know just like today I was like I, I told my buddy I go let me go use the restroom real quick. So I use the restroom and as I'm exiting the restroom, this guy walks in 
and uh, he was a little cuckoo because right as I right as is uh as I'm about to leave, he opens the door and he had a finger gun, just his normal hand, and he goes pew pew pew. Oh my gosh. And he goes, he goes. It was his love gun. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And maybe that was his penis. No, yeah. no. no, no. He literally like went like this, like he was pretending to shoot me. He goes pew pew pew, and he goes, "If that was a real gun, you'd be dead." And I was like, "Oh man, I lost my appetite right now." Like, I was like, "Yeah, that's a little odd, you know." And I was like, yeah, 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 "Good joke." And then I told my friend, oh, "Let's get the heck out of here." And I, Jay, please. I know this sounds really rude, but my friend he, he always makes fun of me for this because I was like, I just had it because that creeped me out and that, that gun thing creeped me out and just the whole area of that little part of Milwaukee kind of creeped me out. So we're at the stop sign. This, we didn't have a GPS. And uh, he was a comic that had a rental car, but he didn't pay for the GPS. And this might have been before they were on our cell phones like they are now. And, and at, at the next stop sign or stoplight, there was a guy standing. I go, hey, how you doing? And the guy goes, hey, what's going on? I go, excuse me, um, where do the rich people live? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh, you want to go? And he basically told me, you know, like another part of town to go to. And that's where I found like, a, like I don't know if it was like Yard House or like one of these really oh, nice restaurants. He's like, I found <laughs> Denny's. <The Chili's>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, get me away from that oh, pharmacy yeah, yeah. part of town, you know? Sketchy over there. Yeah, because since then I've stayed at like, I don't know, I think it's called the International Hotel or something. It's it's, oh, where, it's beautiful, yeah. Yes, it's beautiful, yeah. right? And it's and 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 I st- where the, you know, the Henry Winkler statue is of Fonzie, I believe, and and the opening of uh, Laverne and Shirley. Yeah. Is because I was looking at my hotel window. Shamil. Shamil. Yeah. I was just thinking of that. The, the brewery, what was the name of the brewery? Anybody uh, remember? Hoff and Refs Incorporated or something like that. <laughs> Trivia Hoff question if you're listening out there. <laughs> but I remember looking out the window of my hotel and I was like, oh my gosh, that looks like the beginning of Laverne and Shirley. So I looked it up on YouTube and I'm like, I'm right. This is where, this is great. You know, like, so I have like great memories of Milwaukee. So there you are. Awesome. You're growing up in Milwaukee and uh, you and your, uh, I think your father, your stepfather, your somebody, you would watch wrestling and. My stepdad. Yeah. yeah. So my dad died when I was two. Um, but I grew up with a wonderful stepdad and Monday nights was our time to bond and we'd put on WWF and we'd be sitting on the couch and had a Hulk Hogan doll instead of a Barbie <laughs> doll. And we're like, you That's know, just cool. screaming at the TV and I, we, we just loved it. But you know, when you're watching something like that, you never think you could be that, you know, it's like watching a cartoon. Like you yeah. don't think you can be this Superman or, or maybe you do. I don't know. But it wasn't my like vision of like, wow, I'm gonna be this wrestler, you know? Yeah, it was something you were entertained by and mm-hmm. you and you liked it and it has fond memories. And did you did you wrestle growing up? Were you in like on the wrestling team and No, but I was really involved in sports. Uh, basketball was my sport and I was going to college for basketball and I gave it up to be a model. Or a waitress. She's a <laughs> in Hollywood. She, she played my son. It was like almost blood on the courts. I totally lost. Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they were playing hard. She's like, be aggressive. Nice. Practice like you play. I'm not, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what we tell my son. You know, you, the way yeah. you, what do they say? The way you play in rehe- rehearsal or the yeah, way you yeah. play in... The way you play in practice is the way you play yeah. in the game. Mm-hmm. That sounded the way you play in rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Write that yeah. down. That's a free nugget for you, kids. That's right. But uh, I wasn't that good in basketball. I I liked it, but it was. I remember we would switch it up to to play horse. Yeah. And we're like, let's just play horse. And then I'm like, I'm not that good at spelling either. <laughs> let's just play pony. Pony. <laughs> <laughs> My friend said he was worse at spelling. He goes, let's just play out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're playing sports, you're athletic, you're you know you have the dream to like. You now, was it one of those things? Where you're like, am I going to go to Mil- Am I going to go to um, New York or Los Angeles? Or you just knew L.A. was your? Well, it started because I'm also a roller skater. Like you know how they do the dance skating down in Venice Beach. Super into that. I love it. And my first job was at a roller skating rink. And I was there, and then John Robert Powers, this local model agency, was like, we're going to have a contest, and whoever wins this contest gets a scholarship to go to New York, this huge convention to meet all agents from New York, Milan, and Los Angeles. And uh, so I auditioned. It was like swimsuit and, you know, gown, interview. And then I was tied with my arc enemy. Uh Uh-oh. Like the one chick that I freaking did not vibe with and they're like well there's only one contract because it was an expensive contract oh and you were also getting a year scholarship to this modeling school so they weren't giving two away and Mm. so they decided well we're at a roller skating rink let's have them have a skate off really is it in milwaukee in milwaukee yeah um and so we're like okay so we get our skates on and she decides to team up with her best friend 
And I have all these manahunis in my head like, this isn't fair. It's two against one. You know, you can do so much more with two people than just me. I'm so losing this. But I'm like, okay, fuck it. Like, I got to go give my all. And I did. And because I did it by myself, like they knew right away. They said, because you went out there and you were brave enough to do it solo, you won. Awesome. And that's what led me off to Los Angeles. That's so cool. So what was, the, what was the signature move? Was it the, the scissors? Or the, <laughs> you, you know, when you go down and, you, and yeah. you get the leg out to the oh, side yeah. And, yeah, and the clap. <laughs> that's my jam. <laughs> Two things. Do you like roller? Do you like roller blading as much as you like roller skating, or you love roller skating? Uh, well, roller skating, you can do all the dancing yeah, yeah. and stuff, you know. So that's really my jam. But I did yeah. play roller hockey a little bit because mm, I like roller skating because that's what I yeah. grew yeah. up with. Skating. Yeah. And then roller blading became more popular, I guess, in the '90s or something. And then, and it was weird because the break is in the back instead of the front. And yeah. But I used to roller skate for for hours. As oh my a kid. gosh, I we should it. totally go roller skating. It, where's there? There's a place in Glendale called Moon like something or the other well, the old skate has been there since like 50 you guys probably years. have one out here somewhere skate land huh? in the valley it's like in Reseda <laughs> but if you go in they have a real go I have a feeling you're good like at chip. this yeah, I can get down some roller buggy I can roll down dude I can get he's down. athletic and he's from that era you know what I mean oh like, yeah yeah. Feathered hair out there. <laughs> roll bounce on the end oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get off on, on a side note here, Stevie D. I just have a. Can you do like weird stuff like that was popular when we grew up? Like, are you good at hula hooping and stuff? <laughs> I can do a little bit of a lot of things. I'm not. I'm not great at one thing. Yeah. Misspent youth. I can hula hoop. I can break dance. I can roller skate. Being a little bit of all this. Backspin Which one? Backspin. You can backspin. <laughs> yeah. After the show, break we'll film equipment. it. We'll do all it. Right. Yeah. So there you are. You know. By the way, that's so good to know that. Okay. So it's, was it called John Robert? Powers. Powers. Yeah. That was I. That was a thing. They would come through Fresno too. You'd hear it on the radio, and I always, in the back of my mind, thought, "Is this just a scam? Like, why aren't the? Do they really need more talent? Isn't it?" But it sounds like it was a business, of course, a business model. But it actually sounds like it was legit. Like you got a break from them. Well, and, I mean, in a, yeah. in a sense, it was. I wouldn't say it's a scam, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they wanted people to come, and then you right. had to pay to train. Yeah. You know, you would yeah. pay to learn how to walk a runway and pay how to take a headshot and, and how to speak for a commercial. Yeah. You know, so they're definitely salespeople. Yeah. But for this opportunity, I won the scholarship. That's so, awesome. You know, yeah. it was a home run for me. Wow. So you come to LA. Now, what was life like when, was it your first time coming to Los Angeles? Yes. And then was it just like, whoa, different world? Holy shit. What year was that about? Uh, 1998. <laughs> I came. Yeah. For your listeners, Holy it was from the 1900s. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing from my act because my, my wife and I have been married since 97. So I'm like, from the 1900s. Aww, you know? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. But it was different, right? 98 when you go from Milwaukee to like oh my gosh. Los Angeles. Well, it's the first time I'm leaving home. I yeah. packed up my car. I'm just like, I have a dream. Mom's like, you got to go. And I'm, I was just like. Where did you land? Do you remember what city? Yeah. Your so first... I, I came to Sherman Oaks. I had two model friends. That, Sherman Oaks is a good neighborhood. Yeah. That lived out here right by the Galleria. We we shared an apartment. How awesome is that? We kind of called it a model's apartment. And so it was cool and it was fucking hard. Yeah. You know, it's scary. I, I literally, legit, I cried every single day for one year. Wow. Every On, day. You know what? I, I, I didn't cry every single day, but I, I, I'm going to be honest, though. This is not, My first year was tough here, too, yeah. because I did comedy already for like six years, and I kind of had a taste of what it's like to headline like smaller rooms, like to do longer time. And, you know, and I was in, and, and what got me here was, you know, I became a regular at the comedy store in the Laugh Factory, and I, and I booked the national commercial. I'm like, the time is now. But then that first year is like, you know, you, you, you back of the line, buddy. You got to start all mm -hmm. over. You got to have like what you just described, like roommates and starting. And it's like, yeah, and then you're away from everybody, and man, so there you are. You have the roommates. You're doing. You're you're, you're modeling. I, I kind of like that apartment idea. The three models and. <laughs> yeah. it, it actually, and that was horrific too. You know, I, I live with this guy who is one of my best friends and family members to this day, but he like freaking hated me, and like he would do stuff like push my car out of my tandem spot and <laughs> stuck in the middle, and he creeped me out. He'd be like laying on the floor with like a watch clock on his forehead i come out of my room i'm like this guy's fr you know like yeah, just yeah. creeping me just out get in your head just get in my head yeah. totally he was older and he was like 
this girl thinks she can do whatever she wants. And I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's still doing it. Yeah. Where is he now laying around with his watch clock on his head somewhere, creeping out some new roommate? <laughs> I know. Yeah, cut two, right? 21 years yeah. later, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. This works every time. Um, so then you're, you're, where, and you were, what you said you were waitressing? Yeah, I waitressed uh, at Dublin's on Sunset. Dublin's that was Sunset. a great gig. Have you guys um, ever been there? Yeah, we performed there. Tuesday we used to do nights. shows you there. You did? Comedy Dublin's Dublin. bubbling at Dublin. Oh my God, Omar, we probably like ran, yeah. Was the, I probably like was the, met you guys. Yeah, Were you there the during day. the stand-up comedy years or no? Well, Tuesday I was there night. when Omar and the, and the oh, brothers yeah. owned it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we used to do it all the and time. And then Umagi's like, was across the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did yeah. Miyagi's uh, comedy night on Wednesday nights. Okay. And Tuesday nights was Dublin's, and then Wednesday nights, <gasps> Miyagi's. Yeah. Yeah, we probably crossed Dublin's, paths. man. Aww. That was the it's best. It's like a reunion here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there you are. So you're, you're waitressing at Dublin's, which is a hot spot. I don't know. Yeah. It was probably a really hot spot back when you yeah. were there, there too, right? Is it sad when you drive by it? It's like, I don't know if you've driven past yeah, it, but it's, it's not even open. It's like a weird... And for building. years it hasn't been. They've it's tried California to. California Beach Club or something, but I don't know if that ever opened. I don't know. It became like, you know, some like <laughs> contemporary looking funky building. There was, yeah. By the way, if there's any younger comics uh, and you want to feel what it's like to be a celebrity, play a place like Dublin's because they we did comedy on Tuesdays and then, if, but on Mondays was like their, I don't know what they, at that time they called it like their celebrity night or whatever, but the doorman knew us if we we're, yeah, st- yeah. so they'd be like, yeah, yeah. yeah you guys come in, yeah. come in. And then Brent Boathouse. Right? Uh, they, yeah. Yeah. So Stevie, we, I remember I, the guy goes, come on in, come on in. So I walked in, I'm like, I'm going to see some celebrities, you know? And uh, I think there was just a couple like college basketball players and, yeah. and me and I'm like, oh, this isn't really that, <laughs> like this yeah. is low level celebrity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so you were waitressing, and then and then did you and you were like, okay, I need that next big break. Uh, well, you know. Yeah, you know, I was, I was, you know, running the miles, you know, going yeah. to the auditions, yep. not getting it, getting little things, putting money in the meter, running. Yeah, yeah. and uh, then my my big break was uh, my agent calls me and he says, you know, so WWE is looking to revamp their vision division, but they're doing a diva search contest. And he's like, the winner will win $100,000 and a one-year contract to wrestle. You know, are you interested in even doing something like I this? I got my roller skates ready. So you're like, heck yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I grew up on this. Like, yeah. holy shit. Is that so weird <laughs> if it comes full circle? And I was athletic. I did all this stuff. I'm like, this is perfect for me. And this was the first one they ever did. And so there was thousands of people that tried out. And I made it somewhere in the top 10. And I got cut there. And I was just like, that one hurt. You know, when you just know, like, you're, you're so good close. for this, you know, and you're like, it wasn't even about the, when it's not about the money, yeah. when it's like, this is the job that I want to do. Mm. And then they called me like a month later and they offered me a three year contract. Nice. Yeah. So it worked out. Nice. Wow. Now, what was that? Um, so you, you get the contract. And they're like, OK, you're going to start on Monday, for example. And do you start in L.A. or do you have to pack your bags and go? Somewhere, oh, no, we or? travel every week, 52 weeks out of the year. Wow. So, yeah, all around the world. So that was a big contract. Like, was that a yeah. little stressful in a way? Like, okay, this is this unknown thing where I'm going to... No, well, you know, at that time when you're going You're from, ready. You're ready. Yeah, to, you're, you're ready. Like, you're I'll like, do it every week. Let's yeah, do it. Let's you're go. Like, you're yeah. just hustling. And you're yeah. like, now I got a steady gig. Yes. Like, you don't got to worry about that next day or that next paycheck or that next audition. Yeah. You know, and so... You know, you just hustled and just made it work. But they hired me for eye candy. You know, they were at that time prettying up the division. And in my eyes, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be the champ. Yeah, you know, like yeah, we yeah, had yeah. two different ideas going <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. So I'm, I was basically hustling behind the scenes. Like I showed up to the ring two hours early while the refs are setting up. What a lot of people don't know is we we film shows on Monday and Tuesday. We have uh, Monday Night Raw at, and SmackDown. Now we have there's another show that they have, but at the time those were the two big shows. But we actually perform four, four shows a week. So like if you come to California, you know we'll do Bakersfield, we'll drive to Fresno, then we'll drive to San Diego, and we'll do Monday Night Raw at Staples. You know, wow. so that's so four the, days a week. Wow. So those are kind of like uh, like maybe warm ups in a way. So uh, yeah, they're that, like those house shows. They want to reach those people. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like the bread and butter of the business. Yeah. When I say warm up, I mean like that way you guys have, you know, done the moves and you know who you're. Re- so by the time it's televised, you're like, okay, this is going to be my fourth time doing it. Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's cool. And is it, man, you must have been, when you do that, like you just constantly like, I got to be camera ready. So you got to kind of watch what you eat and you're just ready to do it. Always, you know, and back then, like my life's so different now. I'm very holistic, organic. 
But, you know, back in the day, it's like you're on diet pills, you're in the gyms, you're, you know, I mean, you're just doing anything to be camera ready, you know, yeah. and to sustain that lifestyle. You know, we'd sleep like two hours a night, you know, traveling, you know, and you just got to got to get up and go. There's no option. <laughs> and do, would you really drive? Because I know those towns, Bakersfield, Fresno. Yeah. That's cool because you're like, okay, it's it's uh, you know it's 100 miles to Bakersfield, and then it's another you know hour and a half to Fresno. But then the next day may be from Fresno to like San Diego. Oh my god, we never it's... drive over 300 miles. I think it was. So if yeah. it was over 300 miles, they'll get us a flight. That's good. But but every week you would drive at least three nights. So you'd wrestle until 11 o'clock at night. Try to get some food somewhere. Drive to the next town. You and then you got to find a hotel. We're independent contractors, so everything relies on us. We pay for our rental cars. We pay for the hotels. And when you first start, that's scary. First of all, like, just renting your own car. Like, you're like, okay, where is this car place? And, you know, what do I do? It's just, like, something new and figuring that out. And then when you get to a town at 2 in the morning, you feel weird. You know, like, you're, you're all dressed up, pretty from, like, wrestling. And you're like... Do you have a vacant room? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I promise I'm not a hooker. Or I'm not, you know, like, uh, <laughs> right. yeah. you know, Can and I pay by the hour. I'm, just, uh, curious, just, I'm only going to use it for like three hours. Yeah. And I'm gonna just, uh, yeah. Uh, so, but it, it was a learning process, but definitely a growing process, too. Yeah. So that you would do this in a rental. Now, would you drive by yourself or would you have other wrestlers with you? In or? the beginning, it was by myself. Excuse me. Um, and then I'd hook up with other friends. And so we traveled together. Yeah. Because I think there was like, I mean, I'm sure the wrestling fans will know, like there's been something like like two guys that were like opponents you know, on TV and then they were spotted in the same car. The same people are, they're really friends and it blows their mind, you know? Yeah, so yeah. you guys probably had to watch out for that maybe? I just or? watched oh, the yeah. um, um, Andre the Giant documentary. Mm, so good. Uh, how he and Hulk Hogan at the end and stuff. And was it he... He wouldn't tell Hulk the outcome, like the scripted, like what was going to happen at, there at the end. Did you see it? I at didn't see it, but I heard it was amazing. It was good, yeah. yeah. When they turned him into a bad guy and he never wanted to be a bad guy. As, as his, but, but that's really no really how him. it is, especially back in the day. Like they, back in the day, they literally had two locker rooms, the heels, which are the bad guys, and the faces, which are the good guys. And they cannot communicate. So there would be an agent that would communicate mm. And you'll know maybe what the beginning is, what the cutoff is in the middle, and what how it ends. And you find out that night. There's like no preparing for this stuff. And still today, like so traveling, I can't travel with my with the heel if I'm a face. Right. Um, I play that character too when I travel. So it's it's slightly mind warping. So when you have if you have a friend and then Vince McMahon decides you're gonna be a bad girl, a heel then you can't be friends with that person anymore? Um, I can't travel with them. You can't be seen. I can't be seen. Yeah, yeah. But you can like text or call or something. Or, yeah, yeah. yeah kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm the face, he's the heel. <laughs> and then the next Comedy podcast show, switches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sound like we don't like each other. And then, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready for this next jerk? No. <laughs> We're going to be doing a podcast again. Now, what's it like? I wonder what it's like now because there's, you know, with social media and stuff. So now you kind of... You know, well, yeah, so it's still kind yeah. of the same. Like, uh, you know, when we land in towns, fans know we're coming. So they're all waiting in the airports to try to get autographs and stuff. Oh, yeah. And if I'm a heel, I have to be a bitch to the fans. So it's kind of a really weird yeah. thing. It's like, yeah. if they're like, can I have your autograph? I'm like, you're not good enough. For, you got to yeah. say weird yeah, you play it up. stuff, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for some, a lot of people who are heels maybe are kind of heels in real life and they mm. can kind of play that okay. Yeah. But when it's challenging is when you have somebody who is really like that baby face in real life and then, you know, you got to kind of play that role. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play because I'm more of the... And it hurts yeah. your feelings I'm after. It's probably yeah. going back to yeah. the hotel. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Made although that little kid that. Like, our yeah. fans are so smart. At, yeah, they you know, get, at the yeah. same, you know, They're like, yeah, oh, good. She's a good heel. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, that would they, be cool if they get it. Slightly, but would, yeah. they get it. You know, yeah. the fans that are showing up to places like that, they'll yeah, get it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess if you could just do it, maybe like do it over the top, they know it's like, you well, know. Well, when I was yeah. a kid, I went to see wrestling for the first time and Ox Baker was a big deal. And Ox Baker was in Escape from New York with Kurt Russell. He was the bald guy with the big mustache, hairy, like you know, big imposing dude. And, uh, he walked by me as a little kid. I, I said, Ox, can I have your autograph? He goes, what do you want it for? I'm like, I don't know. It's a good, it's a good question. I don't know. Just show some people. So he grabbed my napkin. He wrote OX and then handed it back to me like he was pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want it for? Yeah. To wipe my ass. Now you're <laughs> yeah. That's so he wrote, awesome. OX. <laughs> 
I could have done that myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Now, you're too dumb. You can't spell anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't. Much better comebacks now. <laughs> okay, walking into the ring with you're you're very. Let's talk about the first time you walked into the ring, like like in front of a live audience, and then also we'll take it to the next level of when it was televised. So, what was it like the very first time you walked into the ring, like? Do you remember the feeling of the butterflies? Or yeah, like, you know, yeah. you always have butterflies. You know, I mean, there's, you know, from 10,000 to if you're at WrestleMania, there's 100,000 people live watching your every move. And then how many viewers at home? Um, we are in like oh, 300 it's... different countries. So I think it's an 8 billion home, some, something of that nature. I, I have could a... literally go to any country right now that has wrestling. Yeah. And they would freak out. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. No, you, it, it's funny because uh, I looked up maybe, I don't know, it's like 15 years ago. I just randomly yeah. looked at like the top 10 TV you know, programs and I was shocked at like, I, I want to say like five or five to seven of them were wrestling and I was like, really? And people, and I, and I said that, I go, can you guys believe it? And, and I said around comedians who are big wrestling fans, I didn't know and they're like, oh yeah, man. And I'm just like, <laughs> Earl I didn't even know. Even, like, yeah. I didn't even know. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you know, as you know, it's like, no, was it was it an eye-opening experience for you like that? Like to go from like, okay, I'm auditioning and then you're like, whoa, there's people that are really into this and you know, like, which is actually really cool. I, I just, I feel like I felt at home. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it was just my vibe. I mean, don't get me wrong. I was nervous all the time, scared all the time. But once you go through the curtain, it's like, it's like going on stage maybe for you. I don't yeah. know. That's what I would imagine. In the beginning. Yeah, you know, you're yeah. nervous to come out from the curtain, but once you're out there, you're like... This is Soaking just my up. jam. Yeah, you so know? that first time, the switch. So let's tell us about that first time. Do you know what city? Do you remember what city it was in the very first time? That I don't was, remember the city, but the um, I started off, and and so I wasn't wrestling. Yeah. like I said, they they said I was a makeup artist, so I was backstage oh. like a pre-tape. So I didn't get to feel the vibe of the crowd yet, and then I just started doing my thing. I was like, I would come home on my days off. And I rent this wrestling ring and it literally cost me $3 a day, $3. Like even 10 years ago, $3 was nothing, you know? And this guy would go with me and I'd be there and the guy's like, all right, you know, you can rent this out. It's half in his garage. It's like in like almost like uh, San Fernando Valley, like kind of in the middle of the nowhere, like where people don't really live Yeah. or different people live there's, there's something about yeah, there's something about wrestling culture right they these guys turn their garages into like wrestling rooms yeah uh, but I, this ring it's like yeah. it's like there's broken down chicken coops over here oh, and this, wow. these weird dogs over here and yeah. i didn't feel like they were gonna attack me but i was definitely in a weird place you're like i'm out of my comfort zone and okay. the guy's like just don't bump around over here and the bump is when, when we hit on our back he's like Whoa. the boards are broken and you could fall through mm. and i was like where the F am I? Yeah. Like, And I was there with this guy, uh, a wrestling friend that I met in my husband's chiropractic office. And he was like, I'll, I'll train you. And I'm like, okay, great. And he, and this guy is like a 300 pounds of muscle, mm. you know? And so I'm thinking, if I'm going to fall through, like, what's going to happen to him? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's going to China. But yeah. there's like this <laughs> weird mentality of like loving this business. And you're just willing to like literally just hitting the ropes. My back would be bloody. It looked like I'd been whipped. Mm. Um, hitting the, the mat and learning that bump. I mean, it literally... I, I cried all the way home. I couldn't turn my neck. Like, mm. and something about waking up the next day, you can't wait to do it again. It, yeah. it is a culture and it is a love and you can only do it if you feel that. Tell us about the first time you walked into the ring on television, were, were you, like to wrestle. Like, did they, did you have walk on music? Did they announce it? Were you like, let's do this. Here we go. Yeah. They create music for you. You got the whole teletron and a whole entrance. I honestly, I don't remember the exact first date, but I feel like every time is like that first time. I mean, oh, oh. you are just you you're just it's live and those people are there. And the the more you do it, the more you connect to them. So the first time it's kind of like, holy crap, what yeah, is happening? Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And you're just hoping you remember any spots. And if you even I didn't even know how to wrestle. They didn't train me. You know, so there <laughs> I'm like, I just, you know Did you wrestle the first time? Uh, yeah, I think it was in like a tag team match. I mean, anytime you're going out there, you're yeah. going to be doing some kind of wrestling or some kind of yeah. bump. Um, do, you, do you talk to your opponent like beforehand, like at three in the afternoon? Okay, let's do a run through. You, you do this and I'll do that. It and, depends. Yeah. So when you have a good opponent, 
that is about the match. Yes. Yes, this happens. When you have somebody that um, doesn't want you to steal the spotlight, maybe somebody that came up in the wrestling ranks, and yeah. I just am this pretty girl oh, picked you're just from cast. Hollywood yeah, yeah. and put in that same spot. Yeah. I was not liked. Like the us girls were not liked by the what they called the wrestlers. You know, so we had to earn our respect. You know, for me I was like, I've paid my dues. I've been in audition and audition and waitressing and hustling in Hollywood. And for them it's like you've never been in one ring. You don't know what hustling is. Yeah. You know? And so it's a whole different mentality of walking into that door. That's funny. It's a, I'm seeing I see so many similarities with stand up like that too. Really? Know? Oh so, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like an initiation. The new kid comes you know? into town. Yeah. You look at him like, who's this guy? You know, you know, and, and all the comics are in the back. You know, he's a hacker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Haters, man, just haters. Yeah, yeah. You're like, let's see what this guy's all about. Or, yeah. or like, you know, like somebody will, uh, you know, there was a uh, there was a comic who, you know, all these comics were, you know, were grinding. We're, you know, doing things like you said, these driving in your car and blah blah blah, sleeping in your all that stuff. And then you finally start doing making some headway, and then somebody will, you know, have a viral video on YouTube or whatever. And now they're headlining, and you're like, you know, some comics are like, whatever, man, I got to, you know, that's the way it works. And other comics are like, she's not even funny, mm-hmm. you know, and, yeah. yeah, 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 you know. And but no, yeah. I mean. You know, it, it, and I, I, it's that same thing. Some people are like, you know what? It's, it doesn't matter. It's like everyone has their path. Like Jay Leno's like, you know, you know, there's room for all of us. No, everyone has room. It's room yeah. for all of us. And then, you know, and other people are like, not, not, not fair. Yeah, you know, yeah. Leno's the type of comic you want to surround yourself with. Like positive people. You know, Darren and I go way back that you just support each other. You're like, yeah. yeah I, hope he, I hope he kicks ass. You know, he yeah. deserves it. Totally. No one's grinded more than him. Yeah. And then you see, you know, ones that I had Paul Rodriguez on the podcast recently, and he, um, what I love about Paul, I did toured with Paul. We we do like these big, you know, theaters and places, and and uh, I remember one time we were backstage at, uh, it might have been in Phoenix at the Dodge. I think it's called the Do- whatever. It's like four thousand, five thousand people, and as we're pulling in, there was a guy standing there by the, you know, where they pulled the fence open and the the gate open and the. Um, and this guy goes, uh, he goes, Paul, Paul, can I, I'm a comic. Can I get on stage? Can I do like some time? And, and dude, Paul let him. What? Paul, Paul let him. Paul, hold your mic up. Yeah. And I, um, let's turn that light on. That way yeah. if we take a photo, you'll, you'll be, you'll be lit. Oh, nice. But, um, be lit. And I, and I asked Paul about that. I go, Paul, I said, Paul, I, I may have unplugged that one, oh, but, um, yeah, but that one will be. I asked Paul, I go, Paul, you, you don't even know that guy. Like, you let him do like five minutes? And he goes, you know, I remember what it was like, you know, to not get on stage. And, you know, I have a big heart. I want to give people a break. And also, if he goes up there and doesn't do well, it shows people, hey, this shit ain't easy. <laughs> and I I'm going to crack on his ass yeah. after that, too. <laughs> I thought that was great, it was right? my first five minutes of cracking on him. Yeah. Oh, that was cool of him. Uh, don't though. worry about that one, because I unplugged it, and the, the podcast will be on. Let's, let's tell you. We're good. We're good. Sorry about that, because we don't want to unplug the, the stuff, but thank you. But yeah. So he's, he's yeah. supportive like that. And yes. a lot of people, like, we have a we have a mutual friend, and I won't mention, but the other day someone tried to follow me on on Twitter, and I go, who is this? I looked, and it said parody account of this person that's both a friend of both of ours. Yeah. And it was just trashing him. It was, oh, a, it was saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm so-and-so, and I'm not funny, and I've been doing this for 15 years. I'm telling the same joke. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, bro. I'm like... So I, I wasn't even sure whether to send it to our friend and go, but I'm like, well, he should be aware of it. Yeah. So I go, who's this clown? I go, yeah. you know, sh- shut him down. Who is this? And he texts me back right away. He knew who it was. Mm. And it's a comic you and I both know going out of the way, like a 12 year old to like cyber bully. Now, if that comic would have put, is it a comic mm. doing this? It's a comic I f- doing I this. I feel like they should put the energy into something positive, writing yeah, better like how jokes. How much time writing, did it take you know? and how much energy are you wasting on this negativity mm-hmm to trash this guy instead of just, you know, if you don't, but it, it's also a compliment, you know, being in social media is so high. I get this <laughs> yeah. every day of my life. I know. Yeah. I know. And every time I see it, I'm just like, wow, I'm doing good. Yeah. Right. I'm like, on the radar. I'm so talking good. About me. You're taking your entire day to mm-hmm. try to blast me. And, yeah. and I feel sad for them. Like, wow, from your like, mom's basement. Really? Like yeah. <laughs> you have all day to like, think about you're supposed how to be down there doing me, laundry. Yeah. You know, but every time I like rise up or, you know, you yeah. get that next gig, there's always somebody to try to let's, let's knock t- you down. Let's talk about some of the stuff you said in the TED Talk. Uh, what I li- or I didn't want to watch the whole thing because I didn't want to ruin it for today. But I watched a- enough of it where I'm like, I like this girl. I like what you said about, I don't want to say your own lines, but the thing about your hair and this. Oh, Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's like my whole talk was about the authenticity of fake, you know. And so 
anytime you can get on stage and really be relatable to people. And as I come on stage and I'm trying to motivate people, I don't look like your normal motivational speaker. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but you know, I got extensions, I got fake eyelashes, fake boobs, you know, this, I, these body suits, like it's what makes me feel good. You know, like legit, like I I said to my husband, I was going to a daughter, a a mommy daughter dance and I had this outfit on. I said, (laughs) babe, is this outfit too much? He's like, honey, if you have to ask me, it's too much. (laughs) And I'm like, great, I'll wear it. Like, it's just me, right? And like, I'm going to get some haters there that think, what is she doing wearing this? And then I'll find my real friends, right? Where they're like, girl, just be yourself. Like, yeah. I don't need to be you or you, and I hope you don't want to now be me. Now she's best friends with my wife, so she's <laughs> my wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know my people. <laughs> but I love it when you when you said, like, you go, you know, I was going to, this is the way I look, and, you know, with Vince, and, you know, and, and you're like, how can I turn this into something even more? And it's like a positive mindset, right? Totally. Yeah. I mean, I just, I'm honestly obsessed with serving and motivating people, and I've been on this journey for a couple years now, and training to be a speaker, to motivate people, and coach people. And finding this, my own journey in it. Like there's no job title for it. It's not like I want to be a lawyer or a doctor and you follow these steps to get there. Like it's this own thing I'm creating to be a champ coach. And it's like, what is that? Do people unlike that name? How many people are going to ridicule me and just say, what's a champ coach? You know, you're only a champion once. I'm like, well, I was a champion. But I- It's one more than you, fool. I'm just good at getting what I want. And it's not because- I just get what I want, but I work my freaking ass off yeah. and I run the miles. Like, you know, Stevie asked me to do this comedy show coming up. I've never told a joke in my life. I am not funny. And literally, <laughs> the first thing I said was yes. Like, yeah. don't think about it. Say yes. Figure it out. But I'm not just going to go up on that stage and I, I might make a fool of myself. I'm okay with that. But I'm going to run the miles. Like, he's my best friend right now. Like, I call him every day. I'm like, look at this. is draft number 875. What do you think? (laughs) I started a kid's open house the other night at school. I started running. I see you. I see you running. (laughs) I'm running the miles, running the miles. Behind the slide. I see you. I see your shoes. Oh, Candace. So, anyway, anything I can do to really help people. Like, it, it's my new calling. It's what makes me feel good. Yeah. I love it when you said you, you, you in the TED Talk, you said you they high-fived you and, they, and, and in wrestling. I love that line about it. That's yeah. tagging you in. Yeah. yeah so, I, I, it's kind of my, my new logo. I, I just started this 21-day champ challenge that I'm launching online. And it's not a motivational program where you just click on it for 21 days and it gives you this quote and something to do. It does that, but I will do it every day with you. Like, I'm your tag team partner. So you'll get the nice video where I look cute with my hair and makeup. And then I'll do that challenge that day where I have no makeup on. I'm in the gym doing whatever challenge it is. And did I fail? I I might fail that day. I mean, we champions fail more than anybody else. Yeah. And like creating a new relationship with failure. Like my kids come home every day and I say, what did you fail at today? Because if you fail, you're trying. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I you like know, that. like even with this comedy thing, um, I had one of our friends in our circle the other day said, uh, he said, I don't want to come to the show because I can't fake laugh because you're not going to be funny. That's negative. And I would say laugh at me. <laughs> and I was laugh. just thinking, fucking challenge yeah, on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, but I was like, you know what? I have a relationship with failure that like, I'm building a life resume to say that I was allowed to come on a comedy stage with people like you that do this for a living and have worked your life and, you know, made it possible to have a stage like that means a lot to me. Like I'm going to try and I'm going to do it because not trying, then you're just sitting home, not doing anything. I know somebody heard once, like if you get the opportunity for something like kick ass, awesome. Say yes, figure it out later. Yeah. Just say yes and then get in your friggin' head, go, we're gonna make this happen. And even if you fail, like, well, how how badass was that to even try it? Yeah. You know? Somebody- but like that's what I'm teaching my kids, right? Yeah. Like they started gymnastics, can't do a cartwheel, fail, fail, fail. Great job. Well, I'm glad you landed on your head. 
go back and try it again. You know, and so as life goes on and people are more brutal or a bully comes to them, it, it just is brush it right off their shoulders, yeah. you know? They're like, I've been through something before that I wasn't good at yeah. and you get better. Well, evil Knievel said it's not yeah. about the jumping, it's about the landing. Ooh, nice. Anybody can go fly and go, Fuck, right. I'm crazy, right. 80 miles an hour in Harley, what's this shit? And then figure out the landing later. It's, it's learning how to land. Yeah. You're, you're not going to land perfectly the first time or the second time. Or Somebody told me the other day that they, they get bored. They go, I get bored. I'm like, why would you get bored? And then, I mean, especially with what? Yeah, just with their life. No like challenges? Just in li- yeah, no, that's what it is. No challenges, right? I like short-term goals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, even as a, as a fitness trainer, I say short-term goals. Let me guess. You want to be fit. You want to be ripped. You want to have, you know, 8% body fat. You know, this isn't the whole world. What's your goal <laughs> for the next two weeks? Yeah. So let's, there's the jump off point right mm-hmm. now. And even when I would like body body fat test people with calipers or something, they're like, oh no, don't test me now yeah. because I want to like you know start working out. Like so, then you're like, no, I want you to test right now. I go, matter of fact, I'm not going to do it today. Dude, we should run to the mall. Tonight you're going to go eat some pasta, yeah, have some, a lot of sodium, have some you know, Chinese food, whatever, and then we're going to do it in the morning. Why? I said because you're going to be bloated as hell, and then in two weeks from now you're going to feel so good about yourself when I check it again. Oh. You're like, oh shit, look what I just did in two weeks, and that's going to be the wind, you know, in your sails to carry you to the next short-term goal and the next and the next we should that should be our thing man we should just run to the mall and uh, just sneak up on people from behind with body, <laughs> with the calipers. body, body fat that? calipers what days do you come here i'm gonna do it again in two weeks <laughs> <laughs> be right back click 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 yeah. people are just yeah. having their own you know good time at panda express <laughs> <laughs> TV What's that? pops up Ding, wow don't mind me Oh yeah, because when I was a kid, wasn't it like if you uh, somebody if you can grab two more than two inches, it was pinch like an inch. It was like that? special case. It was like thing. A, yeah, if you can pinch an inch, it would be right here. Special case, yeah. sir. You like how I'm trying to sit up yeah. super tall yeah. as I do it. <laughs> oh yeah. Over. I'm oh, suck in my stomach. I know that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that uh-huh. could be our podcast thing. Like at yeah. the end. Yeah. Well, it was great having you. Uh, we got the calipers. <laughs> and you pinch an inch. <laughs> so you get the calipers. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, how come I can't book any guests on this thing? <laughs> Everyone's afraid. You know what? Yeah, I thought about that. Like, um, not about. Here's what I thought of. Somebody, I saw some photos of an old house, and it and it, like things were, have been left in this house for years. And one of the things I saw, in, in, like besides like the clothes, there was a scale. And that, and as, as a mental detective, I'm like, oh, somebody cared about themselves enough to purchase a scale and be like, let me kind of keep an eye on this. How much do I weigh? Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, you kind of learn a little bit about somebody like, with the. With this guy, I got to tell you, I, I I feel a lot better about my weight since I got rid of my scale. But <laughs> I have no idea. Steve's not laughing; he hates these kind of jokes, probably. No, the fitness stuff. He's like, let's talk about fitness. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, funny fit. Laugh your abs off. Laugh your abs <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> <laughs> now the first time I did the improv, like a showcase, like 20 years ago, I was like. 30 pounds bigger jacked and I wore a vest like the clubs with no shirt just a vest so I went on stage like work boots and a vest what's up bro it looked like I was <laughs> Luke Perry on steroids and the owner's like you know um, muscles aren't really funny he's like you know like, like, what do you mean bro like life's good you know I'm spray tan I'm hitting the clubs tonight I'm getting the sky bar and then I thought like Oh yeah, remember when Joe Piscopo got all jacked? Yeah. Never said one funny thing again after that. <laughs> got ripped. Yeah. But this woman said one night, she goes, Sir, you have big arms. Have you been to prison? So yeah. like, no, I work out in case I go to prison. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I'm in a boy band. <laughs> no, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's you know, some people could say, I remember one time I was doing push ups in front of my father in law, God rest his soul, he lived to be ninety years old and I was doing push ups. Now he was born in nineteen twenty, he's an old school mentality and he you know, a farmer his whole life and and I'll, and this was a little bit like demotivation because i was doing some push-ups and he goes you know a fat comedian's funnier than one with muscles and i and i remember thinking like gosh he's kind of right but i'm like still i don't want to be a yeah. i do not want to be <laughs> it's just easier to laugh yeah. at the person yeah like i was telling candace i'm like it's not even about every word that's on the page it's about your attitude 75 yes. percent yeah. of it yeah. is going on stage and having fun i said if you're tense the audience is going to be tense mm-hmm. my b- best advice if you, when you do do stand up is what i always say don't memorize it word for word because then it's like you're doing like a paragraph or a monologue right. what i always would do is just do the bullet points be like you know like the key <laughs> words to the joke you know what i mean Sometimes you got to get the words down. You know right, when you couldn't understand me on the phone the other <laughs> you mean day. When I, That's what when I was I saying. When I wrote that essay to CBD yeah, yeah. that was like sixty pages. Yeah. I was like, like oh, yeah, don't do this manifesto <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to underline five bullet points. 
<laughs> Send it back. Print out these five words I just print, <laughs> yeah. underlined, and the rest of it goes in the trash. I'm like, yeah, just be like, you know. It's a roadmap. Yeah. So you don't yeah. want to go. Like, like, for example, that, that last joke that we did, just be like, or, you know, we had a laugh on the, the caliper thing, whatever. What was it called again? Cali- <laughs> calipers. Yeah. Fat, He's like, I've calipers. never had that done before. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so for, if that was. I'm in my car, Darren. <laughs> Hold this, <laughs> Kendrick. If that, <laughs> if that was stand up, you would put, you, I would write down like, uh, fat cal. what's it called again? Calipers. Calipers. I'm not even saying the word right. <laughs> Calipers. I spank kill Billy at Bonnix. <laughs> yeah. And then I would probably write uh, Panda Express and then I'd write whatever, you know, yeah. I would, and you, I would just write the key parts of mm-hmm. what made that part funny, you know. It's like yeah. you had the whole paragraph about your birthday party or something. I said, yeah. Sparkle, sparkle, jumpsuit. And then, you know, you get this custom don't jumpsuit. Don't give my shit away. Oh, yeah, don't. Never, oh, yeah. Let me hear the joke before the thing. She's got this killer joke coming out about her birthday party. But you got to come to the ha-ha on May 31st to hear that shit. Yeah. You don't get that for free. You crazy? <laughs> that's hooking. That's like the bait and switch right there. We're, um, we're, okay, before we go, I want to ask you this. What, uh, is there anything you want to say that you haven't said yet? Uh, about your life or wrestling or what you're doing are you are you still wrestling are you is are you still i don't know are you still wrestling oh, no or? no i'm not wrestling i had my final match a year ago um and now i'm a motivational speaker and and this week has been really a, a powerful week because we lost a, one of our wrestling friends ashley massaro passed away this week she was 39 years old had a 19-year-old daughter, and I just really, like, sat back, like, what could I have done differently? You know, like, she wasn't an intimate friend that I talked to every day, but she was one of my sisters of the squared circle, and we shared (coughs) memories together. And, you know, you kind of ask yourself those things when somebody, when you lose somebody. And the one thing that is really standing so strong for me right now is transition. So... Obviously, she transitioned, but I've had to, you know, transition from wrestling into mommyhood and from mommyhood into being this motivational speaker. And anytime you transition in life, it's really scary and really hard. And your ego gets so in the way of what other people think. How are you going to look? And the biggest thing is be okay to start small, right? Like, I was at the top of the world. I was a superstar. I was making tons of money, posing on magazine covers. And now that I'm a a motivational speaker, I'm at the bottom. I got to go speak for free. I got to lower my rate. Like, I got to run those miles, like, doing this comedy thing. Like, I got to write draft after draft until I'm like, I think this is funny. Now let me start practicing. Like I got to, and Stevie gave me two weeks. So, right. Like every day I got to be running this through my mind and be okay with that transition because otherwise you're not happy. Right. Like I feel there's so many of us, so many of us out there in those jobs where they're just not happy. And in my mind, you're either growing or you're dying. There's no gray area for me. It's either one or the other, and you get to choose. And when you have families and husbands and kids, like that stuff becomes real. And it became real, like I'm dedicating this to Ashley because I've been hiding my greatness of who I am now. Like you look at my social media and it's sexy and there's some boob photos and that's me who I was 10 years ago, you know? (laughs) And although that's part of me, who I am now is different, you know? And when I post a cleavage shot, you know, it gets 10,000 likes. And I post a family shot, it's like 300. So you're like, oh, I shouldn't post that. You know, they don't want to see that. But it's okay. And so just transition. I'll lose some people, but they're not my people. It's okay, yeah. And I'll gain some new people. Absolutely. And they're my people. You know, I've done four comedy albums. And one of them, or some of my earlier, my first big break, was uh, on TV was I uh, did Showtime's Latino Laugh Festival. I'm not Latino, but... <laughs> but it's from Fresno, eh? Yeah, he gets yeah. his jollies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I would, I would talk mm-hmm. about, you know, I was just talking about my life. I was at the comedy store and this producer saw me, put me on the show. And uh, so I got a lot of... That's my introduction to a lot of people, you know. Um, and, uh, and then my second album, I, I still talked about some, you know, and I would still kind of lean into that stuff. You know, my, I would do these characters. I don't know if I've done them on the, on this episode yet, but you know, where I'm, I'm talking about having bright red hair and they're like, what did they, what's up rooster? Do my homework. Ah, ah. 
Stupid. Híjole, what's up with the Ray Rooster? You know? <laughs> and, I, and I would do this bit about Gangland. There's this uh, TV show called Gangland, you know, and then I heck like a gang member. I hold, you know, I, they have the bandana. We're not scared of nothing, you know. But then I, heck, but then I transitioned, you know, and I started talking about, you know, my wife and my son and this, you know, this, and, and, and I, and it's weird because there was a time where it's like what you just said with yeah. the, you know, like people like my new stuff because it, you know, they, they liked it because it's relatable and it's mm-hmm. the little things in life and, and that, that make the things funny, you know, like, I don't know, like, um, you know, the air conditioning, my wife likes to keep a, she likes it to be warmer and I like, you know, I'm, I'm like, my wife's like a little chihuahua on a frozen lake drinking mm-hmm. frappuccino. She's like, you know, she's like, that's like my husband. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's always like that with couples, right? Like I'm always, you know, like, you know, uh, and I, and I go for my wife, the perfect temperature is like, you know, 81 degrees, you know, and for me it's 69. <laughs> You actually yeah, my wife dresses like Ted Kavinsky. She's like the Unabomber <laughs> with a hood on and wool socks up to her knees. Like, I can see your breath. I'm like, how can I see your breath next to me? And I'm, I don't have a cover. I'm kicking the cover off. <laughs> we get up, I get up in the morning. I'm like a ninja. I can like not break like an eggshell. She gets up. She's like a one man band. No, 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 no. Hey, you wake. Listen, before you if you go back to sleep, let me tell you. Don't forget the coffee maker. Are you awake? <laughs> Oh, yes. but the, see that's all that relatable <laughs> yeah, stuff yeah. right now now when you go from the, the certain style to that it's like you know and I did I remember I did a show up north near Sacramento and this guy came up to me with all these tattoos he goes man bro do more gang jokes bro <laughs> and I remember thinking like in that moment I was like I know what he's saying but I'm like no I'm not gonna write more gang jokes because it's like a limited type of audience yeah. and it's yeah. like you know you gotta kind of just like you said you gotta keep there's other gigs besides swap meets that's yeah. what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah it's like you know so but yeah it's it's the transition, you know, where you go from, even with my own stand-up, it's gone from this to that to that, you know, and, and that's good that you're doing that, that you're Thank like, you. you know what, and don't be afraid of like the, because that's the thing, right? People chase those likes or the, am I popular? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, you know. Well, and it just gets confusing and, you know, it's it's like the airplane, you know, thing. I'm sure you've heard it. Put on your mask before somebody else's, right? Yes. Like when I'm yeah. happy and I'm being me. Like you're gonna like who I am. If I'm just trying to be that person from ten years ago, right. you know, life just it's not vibing. And so it it sounds easy, but it's yeah. hard and it, it is a transition period. And so I'm just dedicating that to my friend that passed way too soon and saying, you know, maybe if I was living my purpose, what if that motivated her to not be gone or or somebody else on this planet? And it's about one person it's not about two million people on my facebook saying oh my god you changed my life yeah but if just one person said wow you know what i didn't go into that room and take my life because of this post Mm -hmm. like running those miles are so worth it yeah you know um in closing do you have any any words of inspiration anything you that you that you've uh wow whoa that was hi ashley oh perfect timing did you hear that Wow. wow, that's so weird. Is that is that going to pop on or can we turn it off? I, I have no idea how that turned on. That I don't creepy. even know how to turn it on. You have any word? <laughs> the computer turned on out of nowhere. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow, that was wild. That was, that was a sign. So, like I suggested earlier, when you asked that, I said whatever Stevie D uh, recommends, whatever his advice is, do the opposite. So, <laughs> just my two yeah. cents. <laughs> Yeah, just any any words of inspiration, anything that you've learned along the way that you, you know, maybe for like a a young mom or or like a, you know, an actress like that was like you and, you know, just anybody that's listening that's something that you've learned in life. Don't (laughs) stop. You know, like it's kind of like what I said earlier. It's create a new relationship with failure. You know, like everybody fails every day. And some people may look at my accounts on Instagram and they're like, wow, she's in Turks and Caicos. She's got these fancy purses and jewelry and she lives in this nice place. But I didn't get here because I took some magic pill. You know, like I failed every day. And there's days I wake up and I cry and I get in my car and I put on an audio book. You know, I run the miles every single day. I do a miracle morning in the morning. My kids sit there. They journal. What's a miracle morning? Oh, um... I call it Champion 8. It's the one I created for for me. Um, But we journal. Every morning we get up. So my kids get up very early with us. We journal. We do our gratitude. We have a morning prayer. That's funny you say that about that because 
uh, gratitude list, right? That my yeah. very first episode of the Pocket Party podcast was a gratitude list. I told yeah. my buddy, I go, I go, let's just do five back and forth. And mm-hmm. then I, I uh, whenever I start to get down and depressed, yeah. I, um, I'm at the gym and I'm doing uh, planks. And to make that minute, because I can only do it for a minute, mm-hmm. and to make that, uh, I mean, oh, did I say one minute? Stevie's mm-hmm. looking at me. I, when I do it for ten, <laughs> I, for, <laughs> when I do it for fifteen minutes of planking, at a time, at a time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do it for like a minute, you know. I can do like a minute, and then I'm just like. And then, but during that minute, I just I I do a gratitude list to my mind to kind of make it go by quicker, and, it, and I actually feel better because I'm like I I made myself feel better in the ab area, then my mind feels good because you're. Yeah, you know they really say that first hour in the morning is is really powerful. And I'll be honest, there's mornings I fail at it, and then we had when you know I I got this whole concept as like these people that write these books don't have three kids. Right. And then all of a sudden I get up earlier. My kids get up earlier. I'm like, how's this possible? I don't have any me time. I can't do this stuff. And then I was like, me and my husband were like, our kids can do this. And the best thing is to teach them young because then it's normal. And so they journal every morning. They walk on a nail mat every morning. They do ball work on their feet to ground themselves every morning. We have a morning prayer. They pray for each person. In, in the great. car on the way to school. They have a superfood shake, so that's the nutrition, and we exercise every day. You know, and so it's just, it's like I eat, live, and breathe what I preach in my programs and what's coming out. And people see that, right? That authenticity. Like you can say, oh, go do this because this is what you should do. But when I show them a video of my kids up at 545 every morning, with the journals out, my three-year-old. So, you know, people are like, I can't do that. My three-year-old can walk on the nail mat. Don't tell me you can't do it. It's work. Don't. I mean, I want to sleep in too. You know, I want to lay there. But then all of a sudden when you sleep in, you're like, I don't feel so good. What time do you go to sleep? Early. Early? <laughs> do you, do you, let me ask you this. Perkins <laughs> said, said, okay, you, six yeah. o'clock. We're, <laughs> we're later. No. Do, you, do you try no. to get there? Right oh. now. Yeah. 15 minutes from now, Darren. <laughs> Do you get eight hours of sleep yes, to be able I, to do this? I need sleep. Yeah. You know, there's all these things out there. You know, hustle your butt off, sleep when you're dead. No, your body's going to break down. Yeah. You know, you need to get that six to eight hours, whatever's perfect for your body. I cannot function without it. You know, first thing, I'm grateful my husband makes my bulletproof coffee in the morning. Like, I'm obsessed. I need my bulletproof coffee and I need to wake up. You know, like I, I can't run the show without it, you know, and you just got to take all these. You too could be a champion with bulletproof coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you should get them as a sponsor. Water placement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you know what? Failure is freaking awesome. Like that. It's really like if you're not I failing, mean, you ain't trying. I love that. So let's so. But seriously, though, I mean, it sounds like a joke, but it's true. Like if you're, yeah. you know, like if you're just doing the same routine every day, of course, you're going to be successful. But even if it's something like, you know, like I was trying to learn how to do the speed bag at the gym, like, da, 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 yeah. da, and then I got better and better at it. I'm like, I'm actually getting this pretty fun. Yeah. And then, you know, double unders with the jumping where you're like, you know, like where you one, two, three. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, let me see how high I can go. I'm, and then in your mind, I'm like, like even now when I, if I can do, let, let's just say I'll do like 30, you know, I remember I did 31 because it's like Baskin Robbins, right? Baskin Robbins, <laughs> 31 flavors. I remember I did 31 and, and now when I'm doing it, I, in my mind, I can visualize that I can do a hundred. I haven't done it yet, yeah. but I, I can visualize it. And even when I trip and I fall, like with, when I'm jumping rope, not fall, but you know, like, like ugh, it gets tangled. I'm like, I'm not out of breath like I was two years ago. Well, and you also know? what's happening, and this is why I do a 21 day challenge is you're getting that sense of accomplishment, right? So, so many people think, I want to be rich. I want to have a Ferrari. You know, I want to have a big mansion. And then it's like to get that stuff, they don't think, well, that took 10 years, 20 years, or, you know, all that stuff. So in 21 days, I have somebody pick a goal. For instance, I wore my hair down for 21 days. Now, as a mom of three kids, wearing your hair down, it's like, (laughs) I want to twist it up. You know, you don't have time for that stuff. But what changed for me was I did my hair a little. I put on a little makeup, maybe a little tinted moisturizer. I felt a little better. And when you're consistent, you learn how to keep that promise to yourself. But now you feel accomplished. And you don't have a Ferrari or a million dollars in the bank, but in your mind, you feel good. So you're like, what else can I do? And that trickle effect is what makes you a champ. Yeah. 
I've done something as simple as uh, <laughs> as clean the windshield on my car because I'm like I don't have yeah. time to wash the whole car. But mm. if I clean the windshield as I'm driving, it looks like a clear sky. Not like when you know when the window gets all spotty and dirty, like when it rains, like it did last night. Then you just it's a little depressing. You're driving around like this dirty car, <laughs> but like those little things that you can do just to make your your life better. It's like make your bed in the morning. Yeah. Right. I mean. My husband beats me every single day <laughs> at this. Hey, let's um, isolate that. Candace that, yeah. says her husband yeah. beats her. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sound bite right there. Sound bite. <laughs> Tune in to hear how <laughs> my husband beats me every single day. He makes me walk on nails. <laughs> no. Yeah, but I see you're saying yeah, he. Yeah, he's. But right, but it's an accomplishment, and you don't think of that. But it is. It's totally. that first even do it accomplishment the, of your day. Even, even when I'm at a hotel, I'll do it. Like just to. Yeah. Okay, I want to walk into the hotel room, see the bed made, like, bam, it just to, you know, I love it. I heard yeah. before, if you were doing an important call, dress like you're in a meeting for the call, like you feel good, yeah. because you feel feel kind of slouchy and frumpy. Oh, you, you mean when you're at home and stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just, just like you said, put yourself together a little bit, and you'll feel more, have more self-esteem. You know, if you're yeah. getting on the phone for a meeting, don't That's be in true. your underwear going... Yeah, uh, MTV, can I come in for that pitch meeting uh, next week? Uh, get this show. That- we actually do that in our office. We have mirrors up for our staff. So when they answer the phone, they can see themselves smiling so that the person on the other end can feel it. Oh, you know, that's good. It's a marvelous it's Monday at the good chiropractor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you see yourself and you're like <laughs> frowning. And you're like, oh, they're not going <laughs> to <Yeah>. feel that. <laughs> I love My it. husband, by the way, also painted his phones green and gold at the office. Did you? Yeah, baby. Green for the Cha-ching. money, gold for the honey. <laughs> We're classy up here. <laughs> Stay classy, Bell Canyon. <laughs> Quotation, Pimp Don Magic Wine. <laughs> I love it. Um, wild question, and I don't even know if I'll leave this in, but I, I, I'm so happy that, you know, uh, that things are working out. you got a family and a husband and... He uh, he's a successful chiropractor, and he has a uh, good chiropractor. Yes, yeah. Let's plug it. And then he, he is there something with rhinoceros? I'm, I'm seeing a lot of a yes. ri- rhinoceroses. Yeah. So there's a book that one of our very first motivational books we read. It's called Rhinoceros Success. It says there's three kinds of people. There's sheep, cows, and rhinos. And the sheep are those people that are always following what everybody else does. The cows are just sitting in the pastures, grazing, being lazy, and rhinos are always charging after their dreams. And so and they're we, super horny. No. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> uh, so we, we have them all over our house. Uh, they're reminders to us, to our kids. Um, they also have two-inch thick skin, a damn the torpedo spirit. They're full of energy, and they can't wait to charge as part of our morning prayer. But, you know, it's just that mentality, like, you're going to get awesome. hit, let it bounce off of you, and you keep going after your dreams. That's great. That's yeah. great. we got to write a joke about that. There could be a joke. Mm-hmm. There's a joke for you. they got the sheep, the cow, and the, mm-hmm. you know. And then, you know what I mean? And then there's the... the jackass you know, DVD over there. Can I point to the sheep and the cow? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you, yeah, you know what I mean? You could be like, yeah, and then, I mean, there's a joke in there for sure. Like, yeah. uh, you know, for the longest time, I thought I was a turtle because I wouldn't come out of my show. I don't know. Like, I move real slow. I don't know. You know what I mean? There's, these, yeah. there's something in there. Anyways, thank you for coming on thank the Pocket you. Party podcast. and. Uh, can can I ask you how you came up with Pocket Party Podcast? Yeah, the name? okay. I I, uh, I mean, when I heard it, I was it's always like, a party in my a pocket. Party in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. yes, I will do yeah. that. <laughs> well, there's three types of parties. <laughs> <laughs> there's the party. No, no, no the, the, <laughs> there's the uh, no. Here's the way I came up with it. It's uh, um, I figured you know people have like their when they listen to podcasts. A lot of times they have a, like a device in their their pocket, mm. like a phone or you know whatever they're going to have and I'm like hey every time they're, they're in line at the bank or in, at the airport or they're you know stuck in traffic and they're bored and depressed or whatever I want them to pull out the phone boom now the, the pocket party that's why I awesome. call it that and I like it to be you know inspirational motivational and a little, I like people to learn a little something and yeah. uh, and I don't really go for that morning zoo kind of like like one of the the um this guy had left a review on iTunes. I, I loved it. He goes, he goes. I was expecting like a morning zoo kind of like you know, it's a pocket party. And he goes, and it wasn't that. He goes, but I really like the podcast, and I like that. It's like a yeah. a balance of humor, but we don't, you know, we can get serious. I don't, you know, I love it. It's like this is the the idea of what my vision is uh, for this podcast and for my comedy. Yeah, you know, my comedy. I don't have to hit him with a joke every ten seconds. You know, like I did earlier in my career, where I was like. 
and because I, I came from the radio world where I was like, oh, you know, I don't want any quote dead air. And then you realize like, it's not about that. You want to have those connections with people. Yeah, totally. Well, that's awesome. You know? Thank you so much for having me. Do you have any more questions? I love it. That was good. Um, that was a good question, right? Pocket party. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flipping the script here. What is your advice for me as a, a first time, you know, going on stage for a comedy show? What is your number one advice for me? Um, like I said earlier, edit so you just so you know the the words. Uh, you already you have great mic technique. You're good at the mic. Some people I would say be care, you know be aware of the mic. Mm-hmm. You know they they don't know where to hold it. You look like you're you've held a mic before. You're good at that. Um, is, I that co- is that a joke? No 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 no. <laughs> yeah, you look like you've held. You the look mic. comfortable with that in your hand over <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> Wait, do we do the video part after this? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I mean. Like you're, you're, some people don't know how to hold the mic. You, right. know, you, you look like you're, and obviously you're great in front of audiences. You have great mic. Um, I would say uh, you know give them eye contact and leave and leave them wanting more. I'd say leave them wanting more. Okay, less and is more. Less is more. And, Especially and your first time up. Just yeah, and and I would say like uh, and at least from my opinion, the beginning. Um, I would say uh, some people they they have a drink, they loosen up, and then it turns into two. So I would say stay away from any kind of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and also um, don't, don't curse. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't curse like the first time you do it. And if you do it that maybe if you just curse once, it's okay. But try not to. A lot of times, people their first time they they talk way too fast, they curse too much, they get too loud in the microphone, they yell. So. These are all the pitfalls that can happen the first time. But that's just my opinion. Great. Thank you. you. Know. I yeah. appreciate that. Right that's on. great. All right. Well, listen, thank you for being on the Pocket Party Podcast. Stevie D, where can we find you? Uh, May 31st. Come see us at the Ha Ha Comedy Club with <laughs> Duran. That's Carter, right. And your Instagram star. is? Stevie D Rocks. Uh, I think that's it, right? Perfect. Stevie, Stevie D Rocks on Twitter and everything Stevie D Rocks. Candice. Awesome. Can we- um, mine is all different, but I have Candice Michelle on Facebook. Um, but I prefer Instagram. It's Mrs. Candace Michelle. Yes, I'm married. Yes, I have kids. But I still rock. Come join I'll, me. I'll plug it on uh, everything what I post is. I'll put your Instagram and your your Twitter maybe if you do that at all. Yeah, or, yeah, I have that. That'll be great. Anyways, thanks again, you guys. Pocket right, Party Podcast. On. Get your jollies. Get your jollies. We're done with this interview. Well, look at you. You made it all the way through. How great was that, right? Great podcast. Thank you guys for listening. We have so many shows for you to listen to, so many. Go through all of my episodes, check out the descriptions, and if you like a podcast, do me a favor, click that share button and tell a friend, or just tell a friend verbally. That's how it works, word of mouth. There's nothing better than word of mouth. Oh, man. Uh, If you like this show and you want to throw me a couple of dollars, go to darrencarter.com slash donate. And uh, Mike Begak, special guest. $100 $100 donation. Thank you, Mike Bagak. The best. Thank you. Anyways, you guys have a great day. And as they say at the boxing gym when I leave, all right now, don't hurt nobody. The next boxer leaves, don't hurt nobody. And then when I leave, be careful. So be careful and don't hurt nobody. We'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Everybody listen to Darren Carter We all know he's the party starter So if you want to listen to a podcast for free Then listen to The Pocket Party